So what's up? How you doing today? We're going to take a look at Scarlet Begonias and all the parts for Jerry and Bob for every section and a few ideas for each of them during the jam. And at the very end, I've got a link to a practice backing track where you can try out this stuff yourself. And I've got Jerry's parts so you can go along and look at the charts for Bob and try that stuff. And then it's going to go through it all again the other way around. So let's check it out. I'm going to show you each part and then I'm going to break down what's going afterwards. So let's give a quick listen to the intro and I'll show you what's going on. So we're gonna start going over the Bob parts first because I feel like it makes sense to go over the rhythm part first and then build with the lead kind of on top of that. But this is actually an interesting one where this just this one intro part, Bob's kind of playing the lead part, one of the kind of rare moments on the dead where he, he's doing that. I actually used to think it was Jerry. I didn't realize, oh, it's actually, it's actually Bob. So what he's doing, he's playing around a B, the whole song revolves around B, mixolydian, um, and he's playing just like this. I like to do this both down picks, kind of helps make it a little more punchy. And then it's all octaves. And a good way to get that down is to get this, this, um, this octave part, just practice it up and down, not in order, but like this. I mean, he's going down the scale, but he's skipping this one, oops, you know, here. But get really fluid with that. And then in terms of the rhythm, you're strumming really kind of, I kind of like to keep it going and kind of rather than going it gets a little too stiff so kind of keep that yeah oops you know and, and then keep in mind it have to be exactly as written but play it loose get you know used to playing around different ways and in general you know with, with these parts and Jerry's parts Keep in mind that, you know, they, they always put it different. So this is kind of just a guide. It's, it's, I mean, with Grateful Dead stuff, you never want to think of like an exact part. But sometimes people think that, you know, and I get comments like, ah, this is different, or they didn't play that two verses there. And it's like, well, sometimes every version live is, is different. Maybe they did it on purpose. Maybe they did it by mistake. But always remember to take this stuff with a grain of salt. So that's Bob's part. Now, looking at Jerry's part, he's playing the B. And again, maybe doing this sometimes, but uh, one version I was listening to, he was just doing this. I really liked it. He's just playing the triad right here. And then he's going like this. Then he goes down to an A. Even though it's still jamming over the B, it gives that mixolydian sound by going down there. We're going to talk more a little about that later in the video. And then he goes. Then he goes the same thing, but it's to this A up here, the next inversion. So here's an A root position. An A triad first inversion. And he waits a little later, too. The rhythm's a little different, so it's not the same exact timing. And that's all he does there. Um, or it's just one thing he, get, he does during the intro. And that's it. So let's give a quick listen to both parts of the verse, and we'll check out what's going on. So it goes up to an E, and you know, for Bob, he can play like this, he can play just these three, like this, doesn't matter too much, try it however, slide into it maybe, and then sometimes he'll play the octaves again. And then the rest of it's the same as the intro. And maybe next time, you know, like, some of these little like things he does, I always think that's like a very Hendrixy thing, you know, he kind of really popularized. That sound, Bob does that a lot in his kind of his own way. And um, yeah, that's it for, for Bob's part there. It's just E to B with that the, that little uh, intro part over it. So for Jerry's part, he's, um, you know, he's just playing, he's just you're playing, playing E like this, like this, however you want to play it. And then for the B part, he goes. 
and just matching the the piano. And sometimes he does it, sometimes he doesn't. I mean, or didn't. It's because he was singing, so maybe it depended on the moment. He was maybe focused a lot on singing. Um, sometimes he'd focus on hitting it. And I'll always keep in mind too, if you're listening to the studio version, uh, it's a tough thing. There's a lot more parts and things going on. Um, a lot of you know they're overdubbing stuff, of course, in, in that. So keep in mind it's a little different than when they play it live. So that's just playing that minor third there, hammering it onto the major third, finishing on that flat seven, and again stressing that mixolydian sound. And that's it for the verse. So let's check out the chorus part, kind of that second half of the uh, the verse. It doesn't sound clearly like a normal chorus, but i would call it the chorus. Um, so let's give it a listen, and then we'll see what's going on. So for Bob's parts, we now have some chord movement and he's playing up here, um, or you can play it different ways, but we'll do it this way. He's going up here to an A, first inversion, and then E, B in a version, A, and then E, like this, this first inversion, E, but sometimes it'll go like this. So just playing two strings at a time gives it a little bit of movement. Classic Bob stuff, makes it a little more melodic and interesting rather than just, just playing that. And then does it again. And you could always do those little Hendrixy things, you know, his Hendrix, Bob's Hendrix style thing. So it doesn't have to always be the same thing, you know, we're kind of mixing it up. And then goes back to the, back to that whole thing to, to finish it off. So now for Jerry, he's just doing more kind of, because he's singing, you know, he's focused on that. Just these big, um, Bar chords, E, B, and then back to the same thing for here's in the intro. And that's it. So now let's check out the bridge and then we'll break that down. So for Bob, he's playing up here an F sharp with this again inversion. He like and you should, he more often plays this than than this really, you know. So he's got that, and then sometimes and then B A and then E and and then it hangs out two bars. So a lot of you know messing around. You could throw the B right here if you want to. Does it all again. But this time it's just second ending, just one measure. Climbs up to the F sharp and then to an A. But this time it's not just this, but you can throw this on top too. And sometimes he'll mess around with this, this E on top, the fifth. And then he moves it up to a B. And then same thing here. And then kind of just throws in little notes like that, you know. And then that that's it. And then back back to the uh, to the verse. So for Jerry's part, he's just playing more again big bar chords, just down here F sharp. You know, and this is um, gonna go to B A, and then he's got his little. Brings it right back to F sharp. time we're climbing up a B and then back to you know back into that that E uh, verse part 
So then over the uh, the solo part, I'm not gonna break down. This is the one part I'm not gonna break down because I've already got videos on this. I have a playlist I'm gonna put in the link in the description down below. I have a series of three different um, videos breaking down how to solo on here. I have the vocal melody for guitar that starts it off, and that is breaking down just the vocal melody and, and just simply doing that, and a way of learning that first to give you a good melodic foundation. And then the second of the series is called Beyond the Melody, where we're forgetting the melody, but we're still focused on kind of a note uh, standpoint and looking at different scales, chord tones, and things, and how to navigate the solo that way. And the third one, the melody plus scale plus structure, or I think of it as putting it all together, the melody plus the scale and all that stuff, the chord tones, but adding a good structure to it too. So you're starting with the melody, getting away from it, and building and getting higher and uh, building a little tension with our, our structures and solos. So if that sounds interesting to you, tr check it out at the very end of this video. I will put it in the link in the description below. Again, it'll take you to the playlist with those three plus any other material I have for Scarlet Begonias, this included in all the, uh, the practice backing tracks as uh, well. Let's now check out the outro part. And for Bob, it's the same thing, and Jerry's a little different, but let's listen to that first, and then we'll check it out. So for Bob, you get the same. But Jerry's doing this part, playing around the mixolydian scale going. Which I really like, it's got this a little bit like a, like a Latin kind of feel to it, you know? And those parts just weave uh, in and out. And, and that's it, those are all the different parts that make up the song. But then the jam, of course, there's no concrete thing we can look at because it would defeat the nature of a jam and improvising. But here are just a few ideas to help you navigate through it. So for Bob's parts, I think you wanna just start off by doing what you already know. So doing what he's already doing. He's just playing this. So build, again, like I said at the beginning of get used to this playing around with these octaves. And, uh, you know, or maybe you go like this. Put this note in there from the B chord, you know. Oops. And try sliding around, but playing around things that you already know that are already happening. It's an easy way to ease into it, not just do something completely different that's gonna sound, you know, really, uh, you know, random. So the other thing we can do is learn all the B notes. So, so if we look at this chart here, we got all these B notes, a little different way of looking at chords, but any of those chord tones, grab, you can grab these two right here, oh, sorry, these two, these two, or just like do triads, do three of them, what are you gonna do? Play around those, and then try playing them down two frets. So it's gonna sound like an A, but it's not gonna actually sound like an A because we're still focused on it jamming in B. It's gonna give you more of a B mixolydian sound. So if you play this, you don't even think about A, just think two frets. So like this, and then maybe play the next three. And there you go, it's like four ideas right there. Or maybe up here. And it's like, oh, all I was doing was taking parts of the B chord, playing it down two frets as A, just going back and forth down the scale. So when you get fluid with that, it really opens things up. So think about, that two fret rule, B down to A, and this is so important, not just for this, but for so much mixolydian, like say going into Fire on the Mountain, like they have to do same exact key. B mixolydian, just B, and they stress that A a little more, but when they jam it out, start to get away, and you can just just mess around with this, it's just the same exact thing. So the third thing I'd suggest with getting a Bob sound is to start getting a B7 sound. So don't just play B, but start throwing in the, just that one note, A, which is the flat seven, and that gives you a B7 sound. It gives you a little more of a jazz, blues, or even like a funky sound if you wanna start stressing that. So if you take those notes here on this chart, just say, okay, you've got these and these. Well, you obviously can't play these at the same time, it's in the same string, so just get rid of this and play this A instead. You don't have to always have a B there, a root. 
and that's going to be a B7. So if you're going along. And then start throwing that in there, or this right here, throw it in this way. And there you go. So those are some ideas. It's not, you know, exactly Bob stuff, but just general musical things that he's doing or that you can just do in these situations that I think, uh, you know, work, work great. So now looking at Jerry's um, side of it, I first want to say that it's not really completely different. I think it's very common that people view Jerry and Bob as different players and, and in particular lead and rhythm and they label one the, the other, you know, and then just music in general, like with guitar, that you're a lead player or you're a rhythm player or this and that, like whatever. I don't really view guitar playing like that or just music. I just view it as more of a gray area. And they're doing the same stuff. It's the same musical stuff, just different, a little bit different approaches, you know? And I think of it like two painters. Um, I was actually just learning recently about in, in Europe during like the Impressionist period and maybe in other time periods, a lot of painters would, would would have friends and they'd paint together and they'd go out and they'd paint landscapes. They'd set up their easels and they might be painting different directions, but they might even be painting the same thing, but it was going to come out different. And they'd help each other. They'd critique each other's work, give, give, give feedback and stuff and advice. And uh, I think that's really cool. And I think of it like music and Jerry and Bob are a perfect example of that. They're playing these same musical situations, but they're just bringing their own personal approach to it and they kind of have their own role that they're working on. So it's different that they're not just, you know, working alongside each other, but they're working to together. So that there's a little difference there. But they're doing, it's like they're painting the air and they're doing the same um, same painting, but it's coming coming out different. So with that mindset, you know, and that approach, we can think, okay, for Jerry, we can still just use B mixolydian, right? So we can just take all these notes. Bob's just taking little more pieces of chords, but Jerry's just playing a little more of a, sometimes as chords, but sometimes more as a single note stuff. So make sure you really get that mixolydian uh, stuff down. And then you can do number two, the same thing with the B and A. So get to know those, like those notes of the B chord. And then there you go. It's like, that's the same thing as maybe Bob like, like that, Jerry's more. Ah, you oops. But what's the difference? It's the same notes. It's just kind of like playing it a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a different kind of way, you know. So the third thing I'd say is just get those general Jerry patterns if you want that sound. And that means, okay, take the scale. Especially say you get up, get get up real high yeah, anywhere, you know. We're doing this mixolydian thing. But rather than just run up and down, it kind of run. Get those patterns under your fingers. Get them, you know, going up to. And then maybe the little, you know, um, little good little guide things, the pull-ups. And that will that will give you a little bit of a sound. So those are just some three quick ideas for each of them. Hopefully that helps. But um, you know, check out the practice backing track um, if you want to try this stuff yourself. You know, it, it's it's much better than just just playing along with the, the like a you know recording of them. We can get more clear and get give you a little more space to try out um, this particular these parts or try out more your own thing, which I'm always encouraging. Just just do your own thing. So hopefully that helps, and I'll see you in the next video.